Thank you for being here and taking your valuable time to watch this video. Now, if you remember in the last video, we started talking about this amazing instrument called the guitar lele. My name is Terry Carter, and I spent my career as a Los Angeles studio musician where I played all kinds of instruments, ukulele, guitar, banjo, mandolin, lap steel, pedal steel. And I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite instruments. I actually love the guitar lele. The reason why is because of the diversity of it. It's just got so many possibilities. Remember, it's like a ukulele, but we have the two extra strings that give it a lot more range. And it does be similar to a guitar as well, but remember, we've got a much smaller body, a much smaller neck, which makes it a lot easier to play. So in today's video, what I wanna do is I wanna start diving into some of the chords here on a guitar lately. And I'm also gonna show you my favorite progression um, that you can add not only on a guitar lately, but you can play, but I wanna show you one of my favorite progressions as well. So let's just go ahead and, and jump into this. So remember the string names. It's important to remember this because as I said, it is similar to ukulele. It is similar to a guitar. We're gonna talk more about that, but you wanna remember the string name. So, First string here is A, second is E, third is C, and then the fourth is G. And so if you're a ukulele player, those first four strings, one, two, three, and four, those are exactly like your ukulele, not the baritone, but just like the ukulele. So that would be like the soprano, the concert, and the tenor. Now what it does is it adds a fifth string, which is D, and then adds a sixth string, which is a again, so or low A. Okay, and so it gives you the sound of this, kind of an ukulele sound to this. It's a much fuller, richer, deeper sound. But really what I want you to do is I want you to think of this guitar lately as its separate instrument. Okay? Because if you try to relate it too much to an ukulele or too much as a guitar, you're gonna run into some problems because one, it's gonna take you a long time to try to process that. So just try to think of it as its own instrument, learn it, learn the string names, and learn these chords, and I think you'll be much better off, okay? So, so we already know how it's similar to the ukulele because of the first four strings, the body, the neck, stuff like that. Now, it's also similar to a guitar. Now, it's not a mini guitar. Some people say, isn't this just a mini guitar? No, it's not a mini guitar, because what happens is everything is transposed up a fourth, okay? So, for example, on the guitar, if you play these strings open, it's you got E, B, G, D, A, and E, right? But if you remember now on a guitar lately, it's A, E, C, G, D, and A. And that's transposed up a fourth. So that's how you wanna relate, if you're gonna relate the guitar to the guitar lately, is that everything's transposed up a fourth. So for example, on the guitar, this particular chord, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, is a G chord. But on this guitar lately, this is a C chord. And what that is, is transposed up a fourth. And if you think about it, G, A, B, and C. Okay, so yes, they are similar. The ukulele and the guitar lay are similar. Yes, the guitar and the guitar lay are similar, but really learn this as its own separate instrument, okay? So let's go back to this C chord because I want to also demonstrate a little bit more of the range and the depth of this instrument, right? So if you're an ukulele player, this is the very first chord you play, right? And all you have to do is use just your third finger on the first string, third fret, and then open four, three, and two. And then when you strum it, that's a C chord. And so many ukulele players learn that as their very first chord. But notice, if I play this on a guitar lay, I'm missing out on two additional strings. And so now what I do is, if I play it like this, ah, look at that. That sound versus that sound. So a nice, thick, deep sound versus a little bit more of a thinner, high pitch sound, right? And so all I'm doing for this is I'm taking my third finger keeping it there on the first string, third fret, I'm just gonna add my first finger to the fifth string, second fret, and I'm gonna add my middle finger to the sixth string, third fret, and then I'm gonna strum all six of the strings. And then you get your full C chord. So notice, just the, the possibilities of that are, are really cool. All right, so what I wanna also talk about here is the spacing of these frets, because a big common thing I get from guitar players, especially beginner guitar players, 
is that it's hard to play some of the chords. So like, for example, this C chord we just played, it's hard because it's such a stretch of the fingers. And so what's nice about this guitar lady is that the spacing of the frets is a lot closer, actually more like an ukulele than a guitar, which ends up being a little wider. So if you have small fingers, uh, don't have great dexterity between them, or like, like I said, if you're a beginner to it, these are really tough. Right? This chord right here can be very tough to do if you're just starting off. So the size of this neck, the size of the body makes this a lot easier to do. All right, so what I wanna do, I wanna now pivot and I wanna go into one of my favorite progressions. Okay, I'm gonna play, it's gonna sound like this. This is something that you would hear on um, like Green Day, Time of Your Life, also Oasis, Wonderwall, and these kind of chords are used a lot in contemporary Christian music as well. And I'm going to show you each one of these chords. I'm going to show you the strum pattern. I'm going to give you a few tips on strumming. And also you can grab this PDF of everything I'm playing here below, and that way if you want to just download it or follow along, you can have that as well. All right, so first chord here is a C chord, but remember we did the first C chord was a three finger C chord. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to now do a four finger C chord. All right. And so what I'm doing here is now on the first string, third fret, I'm using my pinky. And then on the second string, I'm using my third finger. I'm still going to play open third, open fourth. But now on the fifth string, I'm going to do, well, this is the same as before. First finger on the fifth string, second fret, and then my second finger on the sixth string, third fret. So now when I strum it, I have this chord, right? And if we go back to the three finger one, it's like this. It's a little bit more open sounding because you have the more open strings versus this one right here. But we want to use this one because all three of the chords in this progression are going to keep this third and fourth fingers right here on these two strings. All right, before I show you though the other two chords, let's talk about the strum pattern. Okay, I'm gonna use my first finger here and I'm gonna strum right here where the body and the neck meet. And I'm just gonna do this pattern. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down. That's it. One, two, and three, four, and. I'm gonna do that strum pattern for the entire song. Now the first chord C is just gonna get one measure. So it's gonna sound like this, ready, and. Now we're gonna to pivot to the next chord here and it's this chord right here. And this is your F add nine. So notice, the only thing I had to do if I go back to the C chord here, is I just gotta take fingers one and two and just simply move them both down a string. So now my middle finger, or my second finger is on the fifth string, third fret, and now my first finger moves down to the fourth string, second fret. I'm not gonna play this sixth string at all, and everything else is the same. So open, third string, and then notice my third and fourth fingers here still on strings one and two. So there's your F add nine, and it's also gonna get one measure. So here we go, and one, two, and three, four, and. And then the last chord is a G sus four chord. And so all you have to do for this one is you're actually gonna take off your middle finger, you're not even gonna use it. And your first finger is just gonna simply go from the fourth string to the third string second fret. You're gonna play an open fourth string, but you're gonna to totally avoid strings five and six. All right, so this is G sus four. But this one's gonna get two measures, so it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, and again. All right, so before we, we put the whole progression together too fast, let's just go back and do it real slow. So back to your C chord here. So ready, and. All right, we're not gonna pause when we play it normally, but we'll pause now. So then go to the F add nine for one measure, and. Now to the G sus four for two measures, and. One more time. All right, so let's go ahead and put it all together now. No, no pausing between the chords. Ready, and it's. And F add nine. G sus four. One more time. Let's repeat it all again. So C. And then you 
get in on that C chord. So that's the progression. Now you, you can speed it up as you get more comfortable with it, but I just wanna leave you there with that. So those are really important chords. Those are actually essential chords because you're gonna see them a lot in different songs. All right, so get those down. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I'm excited though because we have another video coming and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about how this guitar lady and learning this instrument and how to learn it is really gonna transform you as a musician and as a player and just get you really excited about this instrument because I think it is, as I mentioned, one of my favorite instruments and I think the, just the, the possibilities of it with the extended range and the size are really, really great. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Please leave a comment below. You can feel free, just ask any kind of questions or just leave a comment, um, but I'll check those out and I'm excited to hear uh, what you have to say and we'll see you in the next video.